On April 15, 1912, the RMS Titanic sank in the North Atlantic Ocean, symbolizing in commerce through the law of the sea the need for a rescue. On December 23, 1913, the Federal Re-Serve was created to ensure the survival of a segment of the population as this ship goes down. This fiat let it be so currency created inflation, which is the inflation put into the inflatable rescue crafts from the Star of David, David. This inflation is created through the energy of electrical taxation, whereby tax in Latin means zap. This is why everyone in the United States has a deadline to file their tax forms each year by April 15th, the same day the Titanic went down. The RMS in RMS Titanic stands as an abbreviation for Royal Mail Ship. This is an occult symbol indicating the Royal Mail who delivers the cargo mail to the post and then into the mailbox, as above, so below, from the father's post to the mother's mailbox. RMS is also a mathematical abbreviation for root mean square that is used by L electrical engineers to calculate the average power of alternating current. The company that operated the Titanic was also called the White Star Line. This brings us to the aspect of the L Electron Gods in the House of L, who use us for their immortalization. To change the circumstances of our situation, we need to observe their actions in meditative awareness. This means knowing the symbols of this reality and their intentions through those symbols. Here is the scientific reason as to why observation can change the outcome of everything, as seen in what is called the double slit experiment. Time and again, Zeilinger has proven that no matter how extreme its predictions, quantum theory works, even though it shouldn't. And perhaps the ultimate proof of just how unsettling quantum mechanics can be is something called the double slit experiment. It will make you question whether reality exists at all. This simple configuration shoots particles of light called photons one at a time through two tiny slits in a screen. We have a laser which produces light. This light is attenuated such that only one photon at a time emerges. This photon passes through a two-slit assembly and then we have a camera which registers the pattern behind the two-slit assembly. So what we see is that the photons arrive one by one on the screen, some here, some there, and it looks pretty random. 
Since the photons travel one by one, some through this slit, some through that slit, you would expect them to leave a pattern of two stripes on the wall. And you would be wrong. They mysteriously create a band of stripes. This is what you would expect to see if a constant beam of light shined through the two slits. It would spread across the wall like a wave. So how can single bullet-like particles of light create a wave pattern? This could only happen if the particles go through both slits at the same time. In other words, the particle is in two places at once. But strangest of all is what happens when you put detectors next to the slits. When the photons are being watched, the wave pattern disappears. Take away the detectors and the wave pattern comes back. This suggests that we can change the way reality behaves just by looking at it. Does this mean that reality itself is not real? The modern answer is that the path taken by the photon is not an element of reality. We are not allowed to talk about the photon passing through this or this slit. Neither are we allowed to say that the photons pass through both slits. All this kind of language is not applicable. So do we just keep reaping the benefits from quantum mechanics and accept that deep down nature plays by a set of rules that will forever remain a mystery? The interesting message here is that we have quantum physics now around for nearly 100 years and we are still working at the foundations. And that tells me that when we found it, it will be an absolute revelation. It will be something different from what we have been thinking. Photons create the wave, and the observer collapses the wave. Photon is also our connection to the mythology of the dead sun, Phaeton. It could easily be surmised that Photon equals Phaeton. Phaeton means shining sun, and is linked with the Greek elector for shining sun that is from the Greek elektron, meaning amber. There is also evidence in the Phoenician word elikron, meaning shining light. Phaeton is the son of the sun god Helios. When Phaeton, the shining one, finally learned who his father was, he went east to meet him. He induced his father to allow him to drive the chariot of the sun across the heavens for one day. The horses, feeling their reins held by a weaker hand, ran wildly out of their course and came close to the earth, threatening to burn it. Zeus noticed the danger, and with a thunderbolt, he destroyed Phaeton. He fell down into the legendary river Eridanus, where he was found by the river nymphs who mourned him and buried him. The tears of these nymphs turned into amber. Also, in Plato's Timaeus, Critias tells the story of Atlantis. There have been and will be again many destructions of mankind arising out of many causes. The greatest have been brought about by the agencies of fire and water, and other lesser ones by innumerable other causes. There is a story that even you Greeks have preserved, that once upon a time, Phaeton, the son of Helios, having yoked the steeds in his father's chariot, because he was not able to drive them in the path of his father, burnt up all that was upon the earth, and was himself destroyed by a thunderbolt. Now this has the form of a myth, but really signifies a declination of the bodies moving in the heavens around the earth, and a great conflagration of things upon the earth, 
which recurs after long intervals. Eridanos, the river of Hades, is from the ancient Greek Eridanos, meaning amber, and is depicted in ancient Greek writings as being a river in northern Europe that is rich in amber. This river is a metaphor for the Eridanos constellation river in the heavens. Herodotus associated this river with the river Po, since the Po was located near the end of what is called the Amber Trail. In 1997, the movie Contact was released, which was based off of the Carl Sagan novel of the same name. The main character in this movie is Ellie Arroway. Matthew McConaughey also acts in a central role throughout this movie and has more recently been cast in the film Interstellar that showed another version of making contact through the assistance of the planet Saturn. Ellie's main co-worker at SETI, during their search for extraterrestrial signals, is a character named Dr. Kent Clark who is blind, yet plays a key role in helping decode the first messages received from outer space. This is obviously a reverse play on words that signifies the Superman character Clark Kent, who disguises himself by using a pair of glasses, indicating that he also has poor eyesight and therefore could never be associated with Superman, who is himself from the House of El. To become Superman, Clark Kent needs to take off his glasses and wear his costume with the serpentine S, symbolizing the improvement of his vision and strength, and the shedding of his former self. This transition has typically been shown to take place in a phone booth. to hang up this phone and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see I'm going to show them a world without you a world without rules and controls without borders or boundaries a world where anything is possible where we go from there is a choice I leave to you
A call has been made, and there is going to be an answer, an anu swear, oath, vowel, promise to L, through the arrival or contact with the receiver of this call. The real-life person that Carl Sagan based his character Dr. Kent Clark off of is named Kent Cullors. Kent Cullors worked for NASA and was the manager at SETI from 1995 to 2005 for what was called Project Phoenix. The character Ellie Arroway is based off of American astronomer and former director of SETI, Jill Tarter. She is currently on the Starmus board of directors. The Mus in Starmus is a Romanian word meaning boy, ship's boy. Therefore we have Star Boy, which is easily associated with Tezuka's Astro Boy. As linked with the 9-11 emergency phoenix call to the stars, we can see that 9 times 11 is 99, and episode 99 of Tezuka's Astro Boy is called Phoenix Bird. Mus also means mouse and sparrow in many other languages, with mouse being a synonym for black eye, as associated with the black eye sun that was biffed and taken out as detailed in the Golden Web series. The sparrow finds significance through the Latin word passer, meaning sparrow, as related to the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas, whereby it is related to the twelve disciples to become passers-by. The twelve disciples receive the message to be like the moose, sparrow, while the plural form of the twelfth Greek letter, me, is mis, while mu is known mythologically as being a lost or sunken continent, as related back to Atlantis. It is also of interest to note that the Chinese mu, under Mao, is a unit of measurement that is 666 and two-third meters squared. Moose can be further affixed to muse, museum, music, and muscle, the latter being an indication of the bicep flex looking like there is a little mouse from the Latin musculus, meaning little mouse. Other board members of Starmus include Stephen Hawking, Peter Gabriel, Garrick Israelian, and musician astrophysicist Brian May of rock band Queen. The singer of rock band Queen, Freddie Mercury, died of bronchopneumonia brought on by AIDS on November 24, 1991, the same day the Philadelphia Eagles played against the Phoenix Cardinals. Furthermore, a fundraising trust supported by such people as U2's Bono and Robbie Williams has been set up in Freddie Mercury's name, which is called the Mercury Phoenix Trust. Mercury Hermes is known as the god of communication and as a messenger or angel of heaven. He is associated with quickness, stealth, and commerce, as well as the medical caduceus, the symbol of medicine and DNA life. Garrick Israelian and Brian May wrote a book titled Starmus, 50 Years of Man in Space. The letter L is the Roman numeral for 50, and 50 represents duality.
There are 50 lunar months between each Olympic Games ceremony, as depicted in the myth of Selene and Endymion having 50 children. Selene is said to be most likely derived from the Greek selas, meaning light. Mickey is a synonym for paddy, and a paddy is an enclosed motor truck used by police to carry prisoners, and is also called a Black Maria patrol wagon. Relative words to selas show this with the Latin cella, Italian cella, Spanish silla, Portuguese cella, and many more, all translating as saddle. It is a saddle for the soul, as the old Dutch cella says meaning soul. The souls that are sold on the stock market, as the etymologically related French noun cella indicate meaning saddle. This is the sale of the spinal energy, seminal fluid, as shown through the Romanian shell, translated as the part of the backbone or spine near the lumbar region of the back and loin. Loin is also by definition the reproductive organs, which bring the Christmas ex-moon gifts of Saturn through the wormhole, as indirectly hinted at in the translation of loin into the French word rein the reindeer of the double X 20 chromosomes that help say 10 X deliver the loan of loin under the tree of life as the German word Lenda indicates meaning loin. A great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn occurs every 18 to 20 years. In the Anuma Elish, Marduk is said to have 50 names, the 50th name being Nibiru. Nibiru, Nibiru, was used by the Babylonians as a name for Jupiter. Neb means Lord in Egyptian. In the Simpsons Stonecutters episode, Homer is told that the real emergency number is 912. The significance of this is found when we multiply 9 by 12, which is 108. At each event, Starmus holds what is called the 108 minute round table discussion in reflection to the symbol of the 108 minutes that Yuri Gagarin spent as the first man in space in 1961.
After centuries of biblical scholarship, there is yet to be given to the public a more concrete answer as to the 18 missing years of Jesus. The orbit of Jupiter is roughly 12 years and represents the age of Jesus at 12, entering the temple, or mind of the 12 ages of the zodiac tesseract cube, while the orbit of Saturn is roughly 30 years, representing the 30-year-old Christ that begins his ministry through the 30 degrees of each zodiac house in tandem with the moon's synodic month of 30 days. A synod is by definition a religious governing body, telling us that the planetary alignments are the true formation of all government, which is reflected in the symbolism throughout the world. The span between the orbits of Saturn and Jupiter is the 18 missing years, giving us the first piece of the puzzle. The second piece of the puzzle is a lot closer to home. When one becomes an adult, they are said to have reached the age of majority, and this is foremost declared for humanity at the age of 18. This is true since the reflection of this attribute is found from the average size of the human elbow measured to the tip of the middle finger, or digitus medius. This measurement is typically 18 inches, which is also known as a cubit, or an L. One has reached the house of L, 18, and also reached adulthood. Contact has been made through the symbolism of the 18 missing years. In biblical exegesis, meaning to lead out, the biblical cubit is also measured out as 18 inches. The Scottish L is where the phrase, Give him an inch and he'll take an L was derived, eventually turning into, Give him an inch and he'll take a mile. The word inch is related to ounce or oz through the Old English uns and the Latin uncia or uncia, as related to the Spanish uncir meaning yoked, and the Latin mile means soldier, foot soldier. This saying could be rephrased as, Give him an ounce, one twelfth, and hell yokes a soldier. There are 12 inches in a foot, soul, implying that Jupiter 12 takes the soul. The Chinese version of the L measurement is called the Qi, which is verbally related to the 22nd Greek letter Qi. Instead of saying, give him an inch and he'll take a mile, the Chinese version is gaining a kun and asking for a chi. In the 19th century, the surveyor's chi measured 12.058 inches as related to the foot. The traditional unit of length related to the L in India measuring 18 inches is known as the hasta from the Sanskrit hasta that is equal to 24 angula from the Sanskrit angula meaning a finger. 108 angula make what is called a danusha, whereby danusha means bow, hence L bow, as also related to Shiva danusha, or the bow of Shiva. There are 108 karunams, the dances of Shiva. Karunams is from the Tamil karunam and Hindi karuna both meaning hypotenuse and the latter also meaning ear, giving us relation to both audio and the geometry of the triangle. The Egyptian Ab translates as heart, soul, and some translations are also holy father, as cognate with the Hebrew Ev, meaning father, master, teacher. One Egyptian hieroglyph for Ab was a dancing figure indicating the dance of life, which is the same symbol used in India for the dance of Shiva, who resides at the beating heart of the cosmos within the body of Kali. There are both death and life cycles involving this dance. 
Osiris passes through this phase, the still heart, when Isis brings him back to life with a new ab. The heart of the east, as this Egyptian word says, with east. The missing years or dates are written all across our fingers. Certain Greek measurements are named after body parts, including the hands as seen by the English word date, coming from the Greek dactylos, meaning finger. The Greek pishis measures as 24 dactyloi, or 18.20 inches. The dates to our measurement in time are given across our date-like fingers. Every leap year is 366 days long, and 3 multiplied by 6 by 6 again is 108. It is said that there are 108 lines that converge to form the heart chakra. The outer circle of Stonehenge would have contained 60 stones, which is representative of the oriental cycle of Brihaspati. Brihaspati is from the Sanskrit Brihaspati, meaning Lord of Prayer or Devotion, and is associated with Jupiter and the Hindu cycle of 60. This 60-year cycle was known to the Chaldeans, the moon worshippers, as sauce. This is the sauce of the law, as shown in the Latin word use, meaning soup, law, sauce, broth, and justice.
The ancient Greek letter sambi meant like a pie or great pie and is valued at 900. This is related to the ram of Ares or the royal arch masonry degree logo of the triple taff whereby the Greek taff is the 19th letter and has a value of 300. The triple taff, therefore, is 300 times 3, equaling 900. The triple taff is the triple X, or three X shapes, showing us 12 lines for the 12 ages, 12 colors on a color wheel, 12 notes in music, 12 hours on a clock, which is the C lock. As above, so below. Looked at from an alternate perspective, there is a median or 50-50 L line that divides the upper from the lower, with five lines above and five lines below, representing our divided base 10 reality. Seen from this perspective, the median line represents the number 11, or L even. This is the narrow path that points to the small black dot in the very middle, the exit from the matrix, and the basis of the esoteric doctrine of neutrality. Nine hundred squared is thirty, the degrees of a zodiac house, and in base ten mathematics is also a harshad number. Harshad is from the Sanskrit harsh, meaning joy, sexual excitement, and da for give, to give joy, whereby joy indicates Jupiter, as seen in the Romanian word joy, meaning Thursday, the day of Jupiter, as well as the Ossetan di jaus and jaus for Thursday. The use, jaus, of Zeus. The number 18 is also a Harshad number and reflects back to the number of man, 666. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18, which resembles maturity, annuity, and the missing 18. 6 multiplied by 6 and 6 again is 216, which is the hidden trinity of Isis, Ra, and El. 18 multiplied by 6 is 108, which is the collector of honey through the six-pointed hexagon trap of the heart. Hex is from the Greek ex, meaning 6. This is the honey or ichor of immortality. Ichor also carries the adjective Ichorus that is a phonetic relation to the legend of the fallen Icarus. The number 13 that is replete throughout the Great Seal of the United States is indicating this 13th hidden mini-age of the Zodiac. Everyone here is under the hex and spell of sex, whereby the Latin six spelled as sex means six. It is a spell cursed to collect the honey of immortality for the queen bee Isis in the house of El. This is why there are even spelling bees.
This is all linked with the metaphor of shame that is felt when man and woman take of the fruit of knowledge in Eden, and their eyes of duality are opened, and they see their nakedness. This is shown in the little known word pudendum, that means human external genital organs, especially that of a female, being from the Latin pudere, meaning to be ashamed. It is this knowledge that divides the atom and creates rebirth through the virgin Isis and consequently a resurrection of the fallen angels. This is why the Hoover Dam symbol is so important. The Lady Madonna Madonna by definition means the Virgin or Virgin Mary. This symbol of the Virgin breaking her water to birth the new cycle of ages needs to reach a critical mass of awareness to change the L electron behavior of the wave pattern, or it will truly create waves. This so-called terrorist organization has not been pushed into the mainstream spotlight for no reason. ISIS, to complete the symbol, would almost certainly be blamed as being responsible for an attack that leads to the breaking of the Hoover Dam, and thus the waters of the virgin ISIS. Right. right. So, problem. How to make the land more valuable between the time you buy it and the time you sell it. Now, this is California, the richest, most populous state in the Union. I don't need a geography lesson from you, Luthor. Oh, yes, of course, you've been there. I do forget you. Get around, don't you? <laughs> uh, where was I? California. Uh, California, right. Mm -hmm. oh, the San Andreas Fault, maybe you've heard of it. Yes, it's the joining together of two land masses. The fault line is unstable and shifting, which is why you get earthquakes in California from time to time. Wonderful. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Everything west of this line is the richest, most expensive real estate in the world. San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Everything on this side of the line is just hundreds and hundreds of miles of worthless desert land, which just so happens to be owned by... Alex Luthor Incorporated. Now, call me foolish, call me irresponsible. It occurs to me that a 500 megaton bomb planted at just a proper point would... Uh... Would destroy most of California. Millions of innocent people would be killed. And the West Coast as we know it would fall into the sea. Bye-bye, California. <laughs> Hello, new West Coast, my West Coast. Costa del Ex, Lutherville, Marina del Ex, Otisburg. Otisburg? Who's this monster? She's got her own place, Mr. Otisburg? It's a little bitty place. Otisburg? Okay, I just... Wipe it off. That's all. It's a little town. You're a dreamer, Lex Luthor. A sick, twisted dreamer. Your plan couldn't possibly work. I'll admit there were a few problems. Adjusting the precise trajectory of the missile. Finding the optimum stress point for the fault line itself. Which, by the way, is uh, target zero right here. Ooh. The Superman and Lex Luthor, whereby Lex is Latin for law and Luthor is a paronym for luthier, which is an artisan of stringed instruments. By going back to Carl Sagan's contact, one can find that the beings who have made contact are from the Vega star system. Which leads us back to the Hoover Dam in Las Vegas, or the Vegas.
Where does this bring us? To trust law. All of those birth certificates being signed by parents and sent to Babylon or Babylondon from the RMS Royal Mail ship create a trust account for the gods that claim the right of law to harvest us for our ichor or mana that brings them immortality. If the right of claim is not disputed by the majority, the age of majority, or the missing 18 years, the claim is accepted by humanity, and it is business as usual. The maximum of law for this is qui tacet consintit, translated as silence gives consent. This is why silence is golden. Our silence gives the false gods a claim on our created elixir of immortality, golden blood plasma, the ether of the heart. The ending is found in the beginning. We are going through the biblical story of Genesis again, and there will be another Christ offer to be like God that will be presented by the Elohim, or the Shining Ones. The root of the word El is significant. In the Sumerian language it means brightness, shining, while in Old Cornish it means angel. In the Old Testament, God is translated from the Hebrew as Elohim, while the serpent in the garden, or Satan, is translated as Nakash, meaning serpent, and also shining one, or shining seducer. The Elohim, or gods, are the shining ones, and Satan is the shining one. The logical conclusion is that God and Satan are one and the same. If Jesus states that he and the Father are one and the same, from John 10.30, this means that Jesus is also Satan, the Shining One, from the house of El. Acceptance of an offer forms a contract. Silence is agreement to the actions. Yet observation of the L and a statement of non-consent to their agenda can change everything. Do not be like those who are praying fervently for Armageddon. This cycle can stop, but it must be done from within. As within, so without as within, so without.